All right, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. Morning. I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda for today's meeting. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of approving the agenda for today's meeting, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? The agenda is approved. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the August 24th meeting. There's a second. Sir. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of approving the minutes from the August 24th meeting, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The minutes are approved. Next item on the agenda is public comments. We have no one in the room here for public comments. Therefore, uh, I will make one public comment myself. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Brian and George for their service on the committee. It's been, and I should know this off the top of my head, you're, you had an extension, so yeah, four, four, five, years, five. five years, and Brian, you did five years as well. So I think from the uh, perspective of the community, appreciating what you guys have done as far as volunteering for this committee and the contributions you have made to this committee should go noted. And I personally thank you for being on the committee and donating your time and volunteering for Ocean Pine. So thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank uh, you. And then, um, thank you, John. Uh, you're welcome. And so, therefore, uh, I also wanted to take time now. We're moving to the next item on the agenda. We have some guests from the Racket Center, and they had uh, asked if they could make a presentation regarding uh, the fee structure uh, for consideration in next year's budget. So, if you guys would introduce yourselves, and then I believe you have some information that you wanted to share with the rest of the committee. Right. Please. Okay. So, I'm Karen Kaplan. Um, I'm the president of the Platform Tennis Club. And uh, just a little background, uh, myself, the president of Pickleball and the president of tennis, have been meeting regularly with the director of racket sports, Terry Under Koffler. So what I'm bringing to you today is a collaborative uh, effort on our part uh, to share with you. Very good. So if you've got, uh, and then. Um... And this is, I'm Donna Frankowski. I'm the secretary from the Pickleball Club board mm -hmm. at here instead of Claire Walker, who couldn't make it. She's not present. Okay. And do we have anybody here uh, that are guests that are part of your group? Anybody online? Not that I can I see. So. No. Okay, so then we'll so be no. advised that I will be dealing directly with the, both of you during this conversation. Yeah. All right, you said you had some information you were going to share with the rest of the uh, committee. <laughs> Help me out here. <laughs> Is it you got one for everybody? I think so. Let's if not Karen, I can that goes yeah. So it's it's actually a sheet and then like a little packet. Ready to get one? If you need mine. <laughs> we had a okay, thank you. Okay, um, so. Karen, the floor is yours. Okay. <laughs> okay, so background. Last year, um, the board and budget and finance and management came up with a an umbrella fee structure for the racket center. So in other words, uh, it, the only offering was a three sport membership. I'm refer to probably as the umbrella membership. Um, there was a bit of a backlash because um, many of our members only play one sport and the rise in the fees was exorbitant. So backtracking now, um, I am actually going to try to show you the data that shows that our membership has had the opportunity to opt for a three sport membership. And that according to the data that I got off the uh, online site, 
only 92% uh, of our members have a one sport membership. Okay, so let's go through this. Uh, my objectives here are to, um, oh, one of the other things, backing up, is that we've been, we had heard that there's just so many memberships, and it's true, there were 24 uh, um, offerings of memberships. That is a lot. So what we did was uh, we conferred and we went through all of our membership types and we came up with a number of memberships that we are all willing to let go of to reduce the number of memberships. So um, if you look at this- What do you mean by let go of? Eliminate, eliminate, okay. So if you look at this sheet right here, you'll see our memberships listed. <laughs> And the ones with the red dots under the 73124 sales there are the ones that we've collaboratively agreed that are underused and therefore can be eliminated. And you can see the number of memberships. Uh, we only have three for individual after 12, four for junior, you know, and so on and so on. So that would be a total of. Nine memberships, okay, that we could eliminate. Are you referring to, excuse me, are you referring to this sheet now? Refer, well, yeah. It's it's actually, the, but it's the same thing. Okay. Well, I'm telling you the same yeah, thing. Well, where am I looking at this? Uh, well, I was looking at this. This is the. You're reading from that sheet. So I'm trying to figure out. I'm <laughs> trying to match this with this. I'm sorry. Yeah. If I'm being ignorant. So these, these, but, yeah. these are the, the ones with the red dots. I got that. Okay. So, then, okay. so these are underused memberships. So it really, we have a total of 455 paid memberships at the Rapid Center. Um, if we eliminated those memberships, uh, we would only impact 14 of those people who purchased memberships, okay? Um, and then pickleball, that was, t that was all tennis that I was just referring to. And then pickleball uh, would be willing to eliminate two of their memberships, and that would impact only three of the members who purchased those memberships. So that's not really a lot in the scheme of 455 memberships, okay? Uh, it actually comes down to an impact on 3.75% of purchased memberships. So we would be eliminating nine memberships and we would have 14 membership type who are offering remaining if we went with that. Um, now, the next thing I want to talk about is the single sport membership. Okay, according to this data right here, 92% of Rapid Center members have purchased single sports memberships. The three sport combo membership totaled 35 out of the 455 total memberships or about 8% of all Racket Center memberships opting for a three sport combo. So that's the percentage of members who, who are interested in a three sport membership. And just as an aside, I, I have access to the membership list and the three sport combo membership list. At least 10 of those members or memberships are not playing three sports. Just as an aside. Okay. So, meaning they have opted for the three sport membership, but have chosen not to play Correct. the other two. They're only focusing on one. Yes. Okay. No, one or two. One, one or two. Very good, yeah. one or two. Okay. So I'm on number three now on this text page here. We would like to add a two sport membership. Okay. Um, the, the leaders of the Rack Center believe that from feedback from our members that this is something that is wanted. Okay, the rationale is to increase Racket Center membership revenue. So tennis and platform tennis would attract more pickleball players and then hopefully increase membership revenue. Uh, it would also encourage community amongst the players of the different sports and kind of bring the Racket Center together. The Racket Center can offer three discounted two sport memberships as a, as a, as a um, pilot program just for individuals. So for you who don't know about the Rapid Center membership, you probably do know, if you can get an individual or a family membership. But we would say just to keep the number of 
memberships down, let's try a pilot program for the two sport membership, but just for individuals for the first year. I guess my my question would be, why wouldn't you, if it's a pilot program, why wouldn't you offer that at the family level as well? I honestly just was trying to keep the numbers down to make it more appealing, but that would be optimal. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, so I, I, yeah, I guess from an analytic, and again, and I'm not, you know, I'm not a racket sports player. Um, from the analytics, though, uh, are you saying that one of the potential reasons you're keeping or trying or proposing to keep the membership down is that the court time is unavailable or it can't, you know, the, the facility can't absorb no. X number of additional memberships? No. Okay. No. So then no. it goes back to my other question is if you're going to, you know, if you're going to look at it, why wouldn't you look at it from that okay. perspective? Well, my, ra my rationale was that it seemed to be a sore spot. I could be wrong. But from what I've heard in the past, that the, the number of memberships was too many. So, but um, agreed, that would be optimal. That would be the best. I didn't actually um, make a, um, a a sample for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, let me just see what this is. I got to ask a question. I'm new to this. Okay. <laughs> Sure. I'll teach you. Thank you. <laughs> why? Why would there be too many memberships? Because of well, that, uh, that's not. That's is what I've heard. He uh, means. He means membership, membership options. Membership. 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 Oh, not, not membership. <laughs> not membership. No, no <laughs> offerings. Yes. Boxes to check when you're filling out the form or entering. Yes. Yeah. Like system. administrative extraneous. Well, then I'll ask the follow-up. No. Why, why would there be too many options? That is not what I've said, but this is what I've heard. The motivation was to put put forth that umbrella one sport expensive membership and eliminate everything else. That's did, what happened last year. Did you lose lose memberships because of that? Oh, we would have lost memberships, yes, but uh, that was re, re, revised or revisited, something like that. Okay, um, of course. We acknowledge that the board and the GM, of course, make all the final decisions on all of the all of these budget items and finance items. So now, if you could go to this page right here, underneath the under the data, um, this is a proposal for a two sport membership, and I would love to actually make one for fam for family as well, if you are amenable to that. Um, so, looking at the current three sport combo membership, the discount you have applied there is for individuals you have provided a 36.6% discount. Okay, and you can see right underneath there that that's the math right there. And that's how I came to that conclusion. And then for family, you're offering a 38% discount for the three sports, which is very, very nice. Um, the proposal is for the two sport memberships at just a 25% discount. So what I have here is the, the uh, two sport individual rates. As I said, I did not uh, formulate a family rate, but I would be more than happy to do that. So um, just to simplify it, it would be um, pickle plus tennis, tennis plus platform tennis, that's PT or pickle plus platform tennis. And the I at the end there just means that's the individual membership. And I have uh, calculated the figures there. Question, I know this came up in the past, is that um, I guess arguably there's a couple of other aspects of that spec tennis and there's one other, I believe. And how is that being addressed okay. by this particular proposal? Okay, so we, we at but that's the platform tennis score, so I, I'm knowledgeable about that. Um, we play th we play three sports on the platform tennis courts. We play platform tennis, spec tennis, and timeless tennis a little bit. Um, what happened was uh, three year three or four years ago, we see our platform tennis membership dwindling, mm -hmm. and with the help of Araceli Poppin, who is a certified tennis professional, she brought this new game in spec tennis, and that has elevated our membership. So 
With the platform tennis membership, you can play any of those three sports on the court. Yeah. Okay. So on the same court. So if I'm hearing it properly, that those two, mm -hmm. timeless tennis and spec tennis, will fall under the platform tennis category. Yes. That's really about it. Um, what, what are they charging? What do they pay to that? I mean, here on the next page, okay. you have the membership dues. Okay, so if you want to know what they're actually paying, this is where I got the information. Okay. What you're proposing compared to what okay. items on here? What? what I'm proposing for the two sport membership ship is a 25% discount for the two sports, as opposed to the 30. 35 plus percent discount that was being offered for the three, three sport combo membership, which is, can you say something? Sure. As a, a player, an avid pickleball player, obviously I have, I'm an individual, so I have the individual pickleball membership for $200. I think it's great value. Good. Okay. So, for example, I have people like Karen and others that say, come and join the paddle, come and join the, the platform tennis. And I haven't tried it yet, but I do know um, there are a lot of two sport players and um, tennis and pickleball is one, uh, pickleball and platform is the other. And when I looked at this, I thought, well, if I play paddle, um, I could get a paddle membership and it's the same as pickleball, 200. Then I realized that a three sport membership is actually 440. So in order for me to play two sports, that umbrella that you refer to, the three sport, wouldn't be an option for me because I'd be paying more. So as a pickleball player, if I choose to pick up another, just one other, um, there's no discount offered to me. I would be paying two and two sport. In the plan that Karen is showing you, if I picked up a second sport, there would be a discount offered to me as a two player, two sport player. Oh, I just thought that was um because I know a lot of people that play tennis, sorry, play pickle and paddle. So I'm assuming that they have two individual memberships because the umbrella wouldn't would be uh, an option for them. It would be more money. Um, and um, that was just my, um, I looked at it, I thought, oh, that's interesting. If I take a second sport, there's no built-in discount for me. So of course, there also could be people that said, hey, heck, well, I'll just pay for the three and Play two. We have that already. Yeah. yeah. You know those kind of people. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. It's great for the HOA. It's great for the HOA. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but it would be an incentive. And it would also kind of, it would, kind of, it would uh, provide the opportunity for people to actually get the two sport membership and it would discourage like sport jumping. You know, go and play pickleball, you're a pickleball, not, not to mar your pickleball people. Let's just say platform people, they jump onto the pickleball court, you know, they, they signed in already. And so it would kind of discourage that. It would give them an opportunity to become a bona fide member legal, you know. And you know? it's a good point. If, if if I wanted to try paddle, I would be less in, in, inclined to if I had to say, well, I'm going to try it for a year. If I had to pay another 200. But if there was incentive, like you were suggesting, a 25% discount. It's worth it for a year to give it a try. And if I don't play all the time, it's okay. I'm not spending as much. So that was just these numbers that kind of popped out when I looked at them. Okay. But I'm not leaving pickleball. Don't even try. <laughs> I, I know that. <laughs> all right. So um, just to go through the rest of the packet right there very quickly, I'll just tell you what it is. The next page is the, um, the total memberships. Um, that's for aquatics and golf. So I'm not sure how much of a real score point it is with the number of memberships after what we've said, Doug. But we're in the ballpark with the other amenities as far as numbers of memberships. Okay. Um, and then the last page, I made this um, uh, average increases in all three sports over five years. Mm -hmm. I thought that this is just a point of reference and one of the considerations you not, might use when you're, you know, in the budget process and just as something to reflect on, you know, how, how everything's gone over five years. Okay, okay so I, I would like to propose that I come back with a family, uh, you know, continue this, family uh, membership, two sport membership discount for you to consider. 
Questions for Karen? Uh, yeah, I'm assuming you've gone over this with the director of Racket, Racket Center. And yes. He's reviewed yeah. it. And he yes, did. yes. Okay. Yes. Because he's the one that will have to present this to Josh. I gave his approval on everything. Okay, yes. so he's so he's, he's on board with this? So he'll be presenting this to John in his yes. presentation for budget. Okay. Yes, I everything goes yes. past him. Absolutely. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yes, the question I was going to ask. Okay. Sorry. Who, who, uh, interfere? All right. Don, who came up with the rates for last year? Was did they put in the budget? budget? Finance. They just come just up with the it. number. I don't know how they do it. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I'll let me see. Okay. It's a collaboration between the operations team and the budget and finance. That information shared is is really driven by the, you know, the operations team because they have the hands on experience to understand exactly what's going through and so on and so forth. We take more of a let's look and see is it consistent? Are there any anomalies as we go through? We have any questions and so on and so forth. So it is kind of a you know a joint venture, if you will. Okay. Well, uh, go ahead. Go. Ahead. Okay. Just. Yes. Oh, uh, I know there's not a lot of members in in the some of the, the memberships you want to eliminate. What do you think you're going to get a kickback on that? I mean, some of those people maybe can't afford uh, the full memberships. Some of them may like just to play in the afternoon for the afternoon memberships or whatever. How much? It's, it's not a lot of people, but how much kickback are you going to give on that? Maybe, maybe a little bit, but um, you know, there's no reason to have an FP12 membership for tennis. You're a member or you're not a member. So, so that's just an example. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's our, our conclusion there. Um, so if you're not you happy. I understand that. I'm just, it's not a lot of people, so I'm just asking the question. Okay, of course. You, I, you think that's, get, I guess it's to be expected yeah. to some degree. Because let us see, there's but, three people there, there's four people there, there's one there, there, there's a big one, there's five family after 12. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It, it, like, it may not be a big deal, but I would, I, I would suggest, I don't know this for a fact, but after 12 tennis, um, the chances of those individuals, maybe initially, but after a certain amount of time, tend to forget the after 12, and there may not be a way of a you know, swipe in. There's not an alarm that's like, it's not noon yet, you can't play. So that they, yeah, they, that's true. They, okay. they may actually not be adhering to that after 12 and are not necessarily being held to it. So it, it may, they may not like it, but they're probably thinking, yeah, well, we really didn't wait till after 12 anyway. Operational enforcement is a different issue. Yeah, well, they just do North Star and what the capabilities are. Yeah. Uh, um, I have a, a thought. So <clears throat> one of the things that I'm going to gauge the proposal against is if you look at the August reports uh, from, you know, from this month and you look at the revenues, uh, mm -hmm. the year to date actual is 185. And the year-to-date actuals from last year is 155, so we're plus 30,000 at this point. In, you know, year-to-date at this point, in August. and of course that translates down. If you look right in the expense side, year-to-date actual overall, the net operating is 100,320, and last year at this time it was 77,952. So one could <laughs> argue that, despite not being maybe as popular as some of the participants wanted to be, it's still successful from a financial perspective you've got membership you've got courts you've got usage absolutely uh you know and and i guess my question and, and the answer is i don't know the answer to this so we're going to have to take a little bit of a chance a challenge a chance if you will if to consider this proposal how would it affect what we already have tangible data in other words it, you know i'd like to think that if we offer the two sport one you'll have a number of those folks that were paying the three and go oh i got an, an option for two let me do that. Or you had people that only played one, you know, and then said, hmm, I'm not going to go for the three because there's two of them they're not going to play. But then, hey, I might get one. So I can see it going both ways. And I just think it's going to be chance. You know, it's, you know, I, I'm not going to predict. I don't play the lottery. So I don't, you know, I don't know. And I can't predict what yeah, it will be. But I, I think it's reasonable. But just so you know, one of the things I'm going to do, I'm looking at that going, how would this proposal and when they come up with the final fee structure affect this? You know, I who knows, um, you know, there may be a situation where we come back to the, the racket sports folks and say, all right, you came to us in September. You know, it's now, you know, it's now January. All right. We really need to make a fine, although we'll probably be well under the budget process. We, 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 we approve the budget in February for the bylaws. So it would have to be maybe in December, you know, to come back and say, has anything 
substantially changed between now and then with regard to your proposal. You know, and then maybe on your side, you could help us out by, you know, surveying the memberships. All right, and going back and saying, hey, by the way, you know, and of course it's going to be plus or minus 10%. You're going to have to add that in. Go out and ask them, hey, by the way, we're considering this, budget finance is considering this, the board sure. may consider it, and so on and so forth, and see what, and that may help us with the decision. This is plenty right now, don't get me wrong, but I would like to have something that once the word of mouth gets out and more people are aware that this is under consideration, that, you know, will it significantly change going forward and have any impetus to say, hey, this is a great idea, let's do it, or let's recommend it. See, all we can do is recommend. We, you know, sure. At the end of the day, you know, the general manager has to bless it and say, yes, this is feasible from an operations perspective. Because remember, you know, we don't want to put anything on the operations department that causes either a higher expense, you know, or, you know, the inability to carry out, you know, something else that's part of the operation. And then obviously at the board level, you know, they'll make the final decision on what really makes sense for the, you know, for the entire community in the long run. So, okay. Well, uh, other other questions. We have a great system in place to survey the pickleball memberships. And so, you know, we can do that. Yes, we can do that. That's, uh, we can definitely yeah. give you that that data, that feedback from the membership. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions for Karen and um, Donna? Donna. Donna, spell your last name for the record. Frank, like the man's name. Okay. O W S K I. Oh, you're a okay. real estate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have I done my job? I've seen, my your, uh, I've seen your sign before now. Just hit me. Yeah. Great marketing job. There you go. Okay. Well, look. Thank you. Ladies, thank you very Appreciate much it. for the appointment. And thank you very much for this thank detailed you. data. It's been very helpful. Uh, we will continue to look at it and uh, you know observe it. And if you get a chance to get any survey data that you think is relative to this particular issue, please forward it to me and I'll make sure the rest of the committee gets it and we can go from there. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Karen. Good to see you. Thank you. Okay. I, I already called her to <laughs> remind me to tell her. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. Next item on the agenda is the review and discussion of the August 2024 monthly financials. We've been doing this is go. Page by page, we'll get through this and notes. I have a question about that. That's good. Bit. What problem are they solving? Trying to solve the the, the um oh, the, 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 the gist of it was apparently there's the way I read it that the, they feel that the two things. Number one is there's too many categories for membership. You know individual on Tuesdays after 12 o'clock. I mean, I'm making this up, right? Uh, so at the end of the day, to maybe uh, consolidate some of those, you know, memberships and so on and so forth. But I think the biggest one that I recall from last year's budget discussions was the fact that there was a three sport umbrella and, and many, many people didn't play all three sports. And it's reasonable for somebody to say, why am I paying for something that I'm not going to use? Yeah, okay, so that was like that. the biggest... The biggest pushback was we're not going to, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Even if you broke it down, it's, you know, $600 for a three sport membership. And, you know, well, I only play one of them, you know, and I have to have a family one where I only play two, then I'm out 200 bucks. You know, why am I, you know, why am I spending $200 for something I'm not going to use? It's a valid point. So I, I think from a, you know, just kind of from a offerings perspective, in other words, a number of different offerings that we can make, I, I, I think it could be considered, I, I you know. So I say, I mean, that's why I went to the report. I mean, obviously, the three sport umbrella approach is somehow working because we're in the black. We're doing better than we did last year. Uh, and, you know, is that consequence? I don't know. I, I mean, I just think that, uh, you know, trend analysis would allow us to take a look at that over time. But, um, you know, I, I just think that's really what they want to do. If I, if I had my, my, you know, Last comment on it would be, I just think they want a two sport membership. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we settle, we settle on at the end of the day. We want a two sport membership. Yeah. One or, yeah. or three. Yeah. And it's, that's a reason. Yeah, you got one, two, yeah. two or three. I'm, yeah. Didn't the director of the Rocket Sports propose these rates? I mean, didn't he come in at the budget to say, here's what we're proposing? Yeah, I think um, 
I don't recall exactly, yeah, but I know that he comes to the board with the recommendation, or he comes to the Budget Finance Committee, um, or he comes to John first, then he comes to the Budget Finance Committee, and then comes to the comes to the board, and you know all these kind of details are discussed. So um, as far as the two sport, I forgive me for not remembering the exact no, conversations I, that went on at that point in time. I just know that you know I do remember one thing, and uh, I'll suspend Robert's rules um, in here in a second, okay. uh, but. Um, uh, yeah, but that's kind of where we got spending Robert's rules, Monica. Thanks, Doug. The other thing too is the the Why director. Don't you over here, Bob? Well, I didn't want to take away spots from, it. <laughs> but the director um, was. It's not the same director that we have now. That's true. So it's a different person um, this year. So just. Um, yeah, that's a very good point. He's probably a little bit active. Okay, reinstating Robert's rules, Ryan. Um, just to follow on with the conversation. Uh, last year, there was a proposal to have only the combo rates and only a three sport rate. Mm -hmm. And that's what the membership pushed back on. And I, I, my feeling is this is probably a good idea with the two, two sport thing. And that that's, you know, trying to push back against the proposal of, uh, you know, combo umbrella rate only. Mm -hmm. For years forward, okay. yeah. Am I saying that right? Yeah, um, no, because I, I, I think that it, that may still be in the cards, right? It, it, yeah, it would. Would it be interesting? I know we can't do it until obviously something like this goes in, but how would it affect the number of three sport combo memberships if we offered a two sport? Mm -hmm. Okay, in other words, and that could that could affect revenue going down. Well, heck, I had a hundred people, you know, paying six hundred bucks. You know, because they're three sport folks. Okay, just making these numbers now because there's a two sport one, and we come, you know, third, third, and third. So, you know, now I've got fifty people paying that, but I've got fifty others, you know, that are now doing two sports. Well, fifty times two hundred, you know, it's another, you know, ten grand, you know, of lost revenue. There's of lost revenue and membership fees. Right. There's right. thirty five combo members now, and you're right. Some of those might opt for a two sport. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's the other side of I me. Mean, I get it, uh, and I, I think, I, I, you know, from a conceptual level, I think it's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. I think we really need to do our homework and say, you know, do play some what if scenarios. What if we took all thirty five of those, you know, or some portion of those thirty five, and say they're not going to do the combo, they're going to do two, all right? And how does that affect the revenue line, you know, for how many for members? Are going to upgrade the two. Would, and, and Randy, exactly. That's the other yeah, part of it. That's the other part of the simulation to say, okay. and you can make an educated guess of, you know, 5%, 15%, 20%, you know, and then do the math and say, hey, here's our threshold. If we do this, we have to have, you know, 20% more of the single memberships by a combo membership, and we'll be, we'll be breaking even, if you will, versus, you know, losing it. If the other folks, you know, don't, they don't go from three to two, then... You know, we're okay, but uh, it's going to be an interesting, I guess, uh, homework assignment. I, I think it's important that they come back with that survey data. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. George. Well, the other thing is she based all this on the current rates. Mm -hmm. So if the budget comes in and we increase these rates, that's going to have an effect too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this is all on this year's rates. So, you know, if you look at the chart she had where the rates went up, the question becomes, is there a proposal to raise these rates? And, and that enters into the equation also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. In the uh, words of the famed economist John Maynard Keynes, uh, over time, all costs are variable. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how it works. Um, okay, so uh, let's let's end the discussion on the um, uh, the racket sports. I think it was a good one. I think we've got some homework to do, and I'd ask everybody to kind of give it a lot of thoughts, except for Brian and, and George, you know, unless they want to consult after the fact, their input will be greatly appreciated. <laughs> I just want to say that. All meetings are <laughs> open to everybody. <laughs> I'll expect a public comment next month. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the uh, budget for the month of August. Uh, first page looks like we were. Um, uh, under on revenue, but under on uh, expenses, and overall, year to date, we're at 434, and it's 435 to the good. Um, any questions on that? 
All right, next page is the summary financial report. Pretty much says the same thing. All right, next item is the operating results. Uh, anything stands out from anybody on those? Um, just a step back to the operating account summary. I'm curious where our savings is coming from in the public works CPI because it's pretty significant. Um, they're under budget by 92,000. I mean, it, you know, you go out to the community, it looks like everything's getting done and the um, place looks great. I'm just curious as to why, um, where that savings coming from. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's an issue. All right, well, that's that's one of the questions. Oh, I don't mean to, to digress here, but did everybody get the email that I sent to you with the answers from that John gave from the questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to make sure we can. Mm -hmm. um, okay. All right, thank you. Go with that. Okay, this is the... Uh, <laughs> Here's half of their savings here in the uh, operating results. We sold a truck or a vehicle, mm -hmm. and we had savings and wages and benefits. That's a lot of it right there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but we might answer our own. Well, that's okay. We might answer our own questions going, going through. Okay. Anything else on the account summary page? All right. Again, moving to the uh, operating results. A uh, number of items there. Anybody see anything that they have a question about? Yeah, so there's the 78K of uh, under budget and revenues that were reported on the first page and the 81 of expenditures that was under budget that was also reported on the first page. So, okay. Next item is the net operating by department through August. Uh, did anybody... Uh, yeah, and the reason I brought that up is that remember the big discrepancy about the 401k from, you know, in police, you know, from last month. And then we find out that, oh, yeah, it was a timing issue. And they, it's, it, was, it was recorded for the, uh, what was it, re receiving grants and stuff like that. So that was good. Any questions on net operating by department? The good thing is uh, year to date actuals. Is six five. Uh, I, I did have a question on public relations on the net operating year to date with 26,000 ahead. Uh, and what I'm just curious what we reduced there. Read my notes here. Uh, where, where are you at, George? Public relations under on uh, page four there, the operating is for 26,000, almost, you know, 26,500 ahead. Yes, on our budget there. That, yeah, are we, kind of, that just struck me. That, you know, are we doing what we need to do there for public relations? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I tagged that one too, George. Yeah, it's something. It's, it's even better than last year, too. I mean, the budget's comparable to last year, actual, but we're, we're way down. Okay. Getting a better deal on advertising. Yeah. You are not doing as much and doing yeah. more through social media. Sorry. Okay. Like I say with every meeting, I listen. Please wait to be recognized by the chair before you make a comment. Thank you. Uh, so the advertising uh, varies in that operating. Okay, uh, I had a question on net ops. If you if you look, what's interesting at a very kind of macro level, um, we are in a year to date um, from um, from net operating is if you look at year to date actuals, uh, and you know after the uh, expense line, you know the total net operating year to date is six five eight eight and six point five eight. Million, and if you look at the year day last year, it's 6.39. All right, so you know, it looks like you know, we're, we're doing you know, a little better. Yeah, so you know, all things considered, 
Um, you know, that's uh, that's an interesting it's an interesting number when people are saying that you know we're losing money left and right and so on and so forth. I think um, you know it was a a bad summer, if you will. And the numbers don't bear that out. So you know. Um, all right. Anything else on the operating summary? So doing good and four hundred thirty-five thousand to the good as of the end of August. So, all right. Next item is the racket sports combined, which is the one I was looking at when we talked about the uh, things. I had one. Uh, I had one um, item here in uh, under expenses. Uh, the month actual cost was sixty seven thirty four, which was a about a forty eight hundred dollar increase in you know what they had budgeted. So I just questioned you like what you know what is that? Anything else on racket sports? I mean you know again look at look at year to date actual member dues year to date actual one hundred thirty four thousand nine hundred seven year to date last year one hundred fourteen six twenty one. Yet another indicator that the um, uh, you know the the, the the current fee structure you know is producing membership and results and you know again we certainly want to look at it if it can be refined anymore certainly we can do that but that's not to say that it's totally broken either. Any other questions on the racket sports combined? All right, let's move over to pickleball. Any questions on the pickleball page? Seems to be running on all cylinders. Revenues are 22 grand greater than they were at this time last year. Uh, net operating is 12 grand better than it was at this time last year. So, no issues there. All right, next item is tennis. And this looks like it might be, it, it's, you know, revenues are slightly up, expenses are a little bit up, you know, um, it, it, you know, on paper from the net up, it looks like it's doing better than it did last year. Last year at this time we were at minus 217 and, you know, this year we're at at 62.75, so obviously there's some turnaround. But the, but the interesting thing is when you look at it, the member the the revenue on the membership side, you know, is you know about where it was last year. I mean, it's 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 a thousand dollars more this year than it was last year. Uh, just going, sure. Just going through all the the couple things. The other cost. On all three of the the, the racket sports seem to be higher than what was budgeted. Yeah. So in the the wages and benefits, um, pickleballs even up. But then you get to I guess never mind. That's even, pretty much even for the year. Little low on thing. I just the allocation for wage and benefits and then seem to balance all the times, but no big deal here. Yeah, the other note I made here was um for a pickleball, the classes and drop-ins, uh and, and tennis as well. Uh the revenue that they got on those two items is uh, up significantly from mm -hmm. last year. So it looks like whatever programs I guess you can attribute that to both uh, you know, the 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 pro down there now and uh you know, and John and his team, you know, having the structure down there to make that happen. So that's a, let's hope that continues. So Don, a, it's probably not worth it, but how are member dues applied here? If you get a combo, does it take it divided by two and put one? In? You know, that's a good question. I, I, I don't know how they, I don't know how to do that because, it, you know, clearly, and then maybe I'm telling them myself, I really focus on the combined on. racket sports. Right. That's the one I look at because I think there's the fluidity, you know, between the three different sports. And then if right. I just focus on one sport, then you have a, you know, so again, they all play it, you know, this is me talking, they all play at the same location. We can subsidize that location with the membership fee. So I'm not as focused on, you know, there's 27 members here and, and, and right. 14 of them were, dual so let's take half of that move here on this revenue line take the other half move on this revenue line but i, I guess i could ask john 
to see how he spreads that out. Probably not that big a deal, but. All right, so pickleball. Tennis. All right, uh, yeah. platform tennis. Anything, anything on that one? Excuse me, Doug. Please. So okay. we found out today that platform tennis includes spec tennis yeah. and timeless tennis, timeless <laughs> tennis, yeah. and a couple of those other. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's interesting is, I guess, and it's a question I should ask. We can certainly find out. And that is, if you if you uh, pay for platform tennis. You're automatically enrolled in the spec tennis and the timeless tennis. Yeah, correct. <laughs> As an informal <laughs> question. All right. I think that's one of the things we should, you know, again, I'm sure it'll come up as we talk about this fee structure. Okay. Yeah, Randy. No member games. Interesting. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Nobody's nobody signed up for platform tennis in August. Uh, it somehow. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, that's another reason why I think the combined really tells the story. Yeah. You know, the actual bracket center operation itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, see so no more questions on platform. Let's move to aquatics. Um, I, uh, I I had a note here that um, if the uh, if you look at the year to date revenue um, of aquatics, it's uh, better last year, you know, than it is this year. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at the year to date, it's 369, you know, or in this case, 790, if you do, do all of it, 791, the year to date last year was 766, okay? All right, so we're a little bit ahead. Uh, uh, and then the other part of it was where the swim classes, swim, if you look at swim classes, they were way up too, which is a good thing. But the wages, um, you know, were a little bit higher this year than they were last year, so it kind of offset it a little bit. But you know, if you're if you've got your full complement of lifeguards, you know, and your full complement of swim instructors and so on and so forth, one would expect that number to go up. So I, I think that's very reasonable, and I think they're quite frankly, um, you know, that's a money maker. It's three quarters of a million dollars in four months. Revenue. Yeah, yeah, true. But if you look, but however, not to be they say if you look at the net operating, okay, uh, year to date uh, actual was two fifty six. Year to date last year was two seventy five. Okay, yeah. so you know, uh, but I still think they're doing a good job. And yeah, again, it's their prime season, they, so they would you know, get everything up there. Uh, yeah, I think aquatics is is fine. Okay, uh, next item is combined golf ops. I think uh, it speaks for itself. The um, uh, if you look at the uh, again, I, I keep focusing on uh, the net operating, and and you know last year was at this time it was five fifty eight, and this year it's six seventeen. I mean that is a significant increase, okay, yeah. in net operating. I mean, um, yeah, that just goes to show you that, that that's a that is a part of our amenity structure that is generating revenue, and we hope that it stays that way, and it, and. And the management there keeps, you know, sort of selling the course and promoting the course and promoting the, you know, the amenity both within Ocean Pines and outside of Ocean Pines. Um, the only thing I had here, oh, there was a, <laughs> probably gonna laugh. <laughs> what was this? Uh, 13K increase, oh, and services and supplies. There was a, there was a 13K increase under only expense side of it there under services and supplies it was budgeted for 35 and and we spent 48 and i guess you know that's certainly within the delta of um, you know, what we look at i just I was trying to find something bad rather than painting this crazy <laughs> picture <laughs> and I, I, I tried to find something bad but it's really not bad <laughs> frank as chairman of the golf advisory committee <laughs> i like to think we we have a great relationship with bob Frackelman. working with with bob is keeping things going it's important but he likes to think about things i mean yeah. it, it really it's, it's a, a match to, to work with that yeah that organization up there yeah i think it shows too i think bob uh knowing what i know about and what i've heard about is 
fully invested in the Ocean Pines golf course. And so that's a good thing. Anything else on uh, combined golf ops? All right. Next item is the clubhouse grill. Questions there. Place and that place is doing pretty well. Actuals, you know, from the uh, net operating are only down like twenty five hundred dollars from last year. So, you know, and that's could be weather related, and you know, some people didn't show up, whatever. Okay, anything on the anything else on Clubhouse? Uh, Beach Club, pretty, another one that's pretty self explanatory. Um, and uh, uh, Don Montefiti, just make sure that uh, if you uh, uh, if you want to be recognized for anything, just go ahead and yell out. Okay, <clears throat> I will. Not a problem. All right, thank you, Don. Okay. Um, anything else on the Beach Club? Looks like they are. Interestingly enough, you know, again, the fact that net operating word is just under you know twenty five k twenty yeah about twenty five k better than we were last year. So obviously people are visiting there and enjoying themselves. And the next item is beach parking. Uh, it is, believe it or not, again, going just focusing on the net operating side of it. They're what, plus uh, 19,000 more than they were last year to the good. You know, is it, uh, uh, you know, so, you know, beach club was 25K, beach parking was 19K better. and. You know, um, no issues there. Questions? Okay. Uh, next item is the yacht club. Okay. That one's problem. So um, I looked at the again going back to the net operating. Uh, it's down about ninety k from this time last year. Yeah, you know? but. For those who may be listening in, everything it, it's still plus two hundred eighty-four thousand. Okay, so uh, you know, uh, uh, for some reason, if the wrong message seems to get out somehow, it's not the case at all. The, the yacht club is making money, and you know they are they are on target as far as revenue projections. But the, again, compared to last year, they're a little bit different. They're a little bit down, but you know, yeah, I think that happens in any business, and certainly no cause for concern from my perspective, Brian. I just wanted to make note that the banquet food and beverage are zero for the month. Did mm -hmm. we actually not have any any banquets mm -hmm. or receptions or seemed kind of odd that we had nothing? I was just looking at sure. I was just looking at the banquet sheet. There was nothing scheduled yeah. for uh, okay. for that month. But that to me that's concerning. Yeah, I mean in the middle of uh, mm -hmm. uh, the it's summer good. in the month of August we had no events. And if you look at what he has scheduled for next year, it still gets light at the end of August. You know, it's funny you mentioned it. I had a conversation with Matt Orr several months ago. Yeah. Uh, I mean, probably the better part of nine months ago. And he was saying, you know, what's an interesting phenomena is what he's seen is there are fewer and fewer weddings in August. Yeah. You know, he didn't know what it, what it is. And you can't put his finger on it, but there's fewer and fewer weddings in August. They're opting for you know, late spring uh, or, you know, early fall. And, um, and uh, you know, I just I don't know. I think I know he's watching that clearly. Yeah. That's a very good source of revenue for him. So I know he's spot on on his analysis uh, as far as uh, finding the root cause. Well, you know, he's I'm sure he's working on it. Yeah. I'll suspend Robert's rules. Monica, did you have something? Yeah, I just um, I have a sibling that works in the business catering business and things like that, and they're seeing the same thing across the bridge that August numbers weddings are down. Um, whether it be the heat or whatever, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Travel season, vacations, you know, and that's some of the things he threw out to me. So it's not just here, but it's also going on across the bridge. All right. Do you right. think the food going down? Make Robert's rules will be reinstated. Sorry. Done. Do you think the food going down is just because of wedding stuff, or is there an issue with? I, you know, I. Don't know. I mean, I'm not going to even venture to guess. I, it, it's just, it's one of those things I've heard, you know, I've heard mixed reviews. I've heard people love it or people that could take it or leave it. And I think that's, but you're going to get that anywhere. Yeah. You know, I mean, you could go to the pizza joint and say, I'd like that pizza. I hated that pizza. So I, I don't put a whole lot of stock in that. Randy. Is there a relationship between the facility rental and food banquet? 
Yes, the the way I understand it is that in order to uh, have a banquet there, you're going to pay a rental fee for the use of the facility. All right, so they really go hand function. in hand. Uh, I don't know if Matt puts together a package. In other words, is he have a flat rate for renting the, um, uh, you know, the banquet hall? The answer is I don't know. And quite frankly, I would leave it up to him. You know, because he's going to understand, you know, the difference between a 75 person event and a 200 person event, you know, so that's why they're in operation. And so the idea of just, I'm sure knowing him and his experience that uh, he's managed it, and quite frankly, in the, in the past has managed it well. Facility rental is way down. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they, they go hand in hand. Right. Uh, and avoid the beverage. Yeah. Type of beverage. Oops. George. Well, just, just looking at his event deposits that he get, sent us back in July on the 21st for next year, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's only six things booked so far. For August? No, for the whole year, starting in April. On this, he's got a, a wedding, a, uh, another wedding, another wedding, two in April, one in May. One in August and one in September. And that's it. That's his event deposit on hand is the 721 24. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people put weddings out, you know, a year in advance and all that. I, to me, it's a little concerning that it's a late book, but maybe that's normal at the best time of the year. Could be. I mean, um, there's probably other factors. Yeah. No. Yeah. Just a good point. Yeah. I, don't want to stir up anything that doesn't need to be stirred up, but I, I will, you know, I've never been one to be quiet, but I, I suspect, you know, that uh, any company, ABC Incorporated or whatever, you know, if an RFP is out on the street, you know, there's a chance that even as the incumbent, you know, th there's there's question there. Me personally, <laughs> I'll go on record as saying I want to see the Matt Ord company stay as our food and beverage operations provider. Period. Okay. I'm not going to make any Doug, bones about it. Doug, yeah. Doug, can you all hear me? Doug, I, I, I'm going I'm to sign up. I'm sorry, John. What? He's, I think he said he's going to step in. So, but anyway, uh, at the end of the day, you know, if, if, but it could also be the result of, you know, not uh, not having as much interest, you know, in the, you know, in there as, as there was right now. So, um, you know, it's noted, uh, but. Um, and again, I'm going to say anything against them. I'm just. No, 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 no. I didn't say anything that. You know, with, that. with the, the, the bank was being down, I'm just looking at the sheet that he had as a drawing. <laughs> Linda. Uh, no, she's not here. So, Frank, to George's point, uh, how does that, the six you said scheduled for the upcoming year, how does that compare with this year? Did you get a chance to do something? Or for the, for that, for the, the same months or? Well, I only have this as of July that when he gave it to us, because all the ones before July are on, on here, but July, one, two, three, you know, three in July. <laughs> I'm sorry, he actually had one, two, three, four books in August for this year. For this year. Yeah, there's one on 8 10. There's one on 8 17, one on 8 19, one on 8 21. So maybe they didn't happen. I don't know. Or maybe they just didn't get into the book. Yeah. Well, like I said, that's an operational issue. And, and, you know, that we are certainly not in a position to solve. We're just observing and uh, hoping that, uh, you know, it, it uh, it changes. Is it next significant or is it not? You know, um, we don't know. Yeah, I guess the answer is we don't we don't know. Yeah. You know, and knowing that the uh, there's a lot of revenue driven off the events and the weddings and things of that nature, that uh, you know, I suspect it's a focus area for him. But uh, he's got a bunch in in September and yeah, in October there's a bunch more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nine or there's like nine in September, eight in September. And, All right. Any other uh, thoughts on the yacht club? All right, moving on. Uh, marinas. Uh, my only note of the marinas was the fuel sales are up from last year. I guess more people are out boating and had better weekends and so on and so forth weather-wise. Any questions on marinas? 
Okay. Reserve summary. I only had one, but everything looks fine. We're at 8.8 .8 in all of our reserve funds. Um, the only note I had, and this is kind of a sidebar issue, and that would be there's 106,000 in the new capital fund. Uh, are there any um, targeted projects, uh, you know, or areas of requirement coming up in next fiscal budget, uh, you know, that would, you know, sort of that that could be allocated against that fund? I don't know uh, I, if I remember correctly that we, when I was on the board and we passed that, um, geez, that had to be about five years ago where we said that fund can only be built up so much. I think it was 500K and then it had to be spent on something. It couldn't, it couldn't just be, <laughs> to use the old term, a slush fund, okay? <laughs> and, you know, taking people's money and put it in our pocket and you know, put it in the association's pocket. So the, the idea, so I just wanted to kind of, it's kind of a bullet item to just think about as we go through the budget preparation processes, I would be asking John uh, and his, you know, is there anything there that you might have earmarked for that, you know, and if not, then, you know, where do we see that level of funding being at at the end of the next fiscal year, okay? Um, Question. Done. Interest income that's on here, Monica, is that strictly from CDs? Uh, I, no, oh, I'm sorry, yes, let me, <laughs> victim of my own organization. <laughs> uh, let me resend, resend Robert's rules, Monica. And now there's other interest in there. I, you know, we could probably get a breakdown a little bit, but the majority of it is CD. Mm -hmm. Go. Yeah. The mass majority of it is. Yeah. I'm sorry. The biggest bulk of it is from the CDs. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Robert's rules reinstated. Any other questions on? Uh, the reserve fund. Okay. Next item there is the capital summary. Just kind of gives you a breakdown of all the uh, things that were spent. Uh, I only had one question. Oh, the uh, there was an item here for 22K for soft shoreline. And I believe that's the area around uh, the South Pond. Yeah, and I, because we had, uh, I remember one of the, I think it might have been the Environmental and Natural Assets Committee had started a project to have a vendor come in and look at that. And uh, John was going to evaluate it to see if it was feasible, uh, both from a initial investment and any long-term costs for maintenance and so on and so forth. I just don't know where we are on that. It sounds like it's still on the books, if you will. Um, my guess is the 20K was a, um, you know, an expense for maybe some consulting or some review work and so on and so forth. I was just curious as to what that was. So I'm going to add that in as one of the questions we have. Anything else on the uh, the uh, curious question? Capital summary. Hey, yeah. The ir irrigation fence. That's more. What, what's that? Under recreation. Oh, um, irrigation. I believe uh, so. You know, we've um, we are donating uh, and doing work to put up a veterans For memorial. Them, yeah. You know, I guess overhang or whether it's a gazebo or gazebo. something yeah. along those lines, and yeah. it's tied into that. There was a commitment yeah. made uh, with that organization uh, for Ocean Pines to participate both financially and I guess culturally. Yeah. To, you know, to involve. Yeah, I see they started it. I'm just yeah, the irrigation sense. Yeah. I, that's irrigating right. the top offense. It's not a year. Oh, okay. Offense. That's irrigation offense. Thanks, Brian. I didn't see that comma. Eyesight goes with age. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else on the capital summary? I mean, most of that stuff is self explanatory. All right. The balance sheet. No real significant changes, but Don, go ahead. Uh, accounts receivable other is negative 108,000. I think this came up before, and maybe Brian or George remember what the answer was on this. Mm. Yeah, that's one back in the match. AR other, so negative 107,000. Yeah. If you remember, Brian? I, I remember it was that way uh, one other month, but I don't remember the details. There was some reason, but maybe it's golf or something. I don't know. 
Okay. Um, I will uh, question for this. I will. Uh, okay. All right. I'll add that to my questions. All right. Anything else on the uh, balance sheet? All right. Looking at the uh, cash investments, all our CDRs and things of that nature. Okay. 18,907,000. Cash on hand. That'd be okay. Any questions? Next item is the membership report. See a whole lot there. Okay. Then the next item we'll deal with is the uh, supplementary reports. Uh, so let's go to the uh, uh, the Club income statement comparisons. So the Club on my orders report, but what I would I mean, under food revenue right here. I mean, it's just probably most. What's your Don said with the Yacht Club? Yeah, Yacht Club. Income statement comparisons. I see food under revenue is the first thing under revenue. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, I see what really current period. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that, that's under events. Ah, okay. So they, yeah. Oh, and, oh, 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 that oh, would make sense because they didn't have anything under in their events. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Under events, it's zero, but that would coincide with, yeah. Our, our uh, with Steve's reports, mm -hmm. right? Anything else on there? I notice, you know, again, these the detail here corresponds with the overall, you know, reduction in you know what we were doing year to date, what they were doing year to date last year versus this year. And this just gives more of the detail as to what that was. Uh, to me, nothing really stands out. I think it encompasses the overall operation, the things that are tied together, like a you know rental like rental income and, and bank of food sales. You know, and obviously wouldn't wouldn't happen if the event wasn't held. Um, Nothing in there really kind of says it's you know going up so much that um, you know it warrants some investigation. Um, anybody see anything else? Okay, that one. Let's move on to the Beach Club. Yeah, pretty pretty much the same. I think uh, it's been consistent year to year. It's a little bit up this year as far as you know. Well, you know, yeah, yeah. If you look at uh, you know the overall August um, twenty three and August twenty four, so almost twenty five thousand dollars gain like we showed on the other thing, the other report. Okay. Next item, clubhouse. Randy, what is multi? Where you should where you should hold the expensive flavor on the okay. multi. That's a good question. I wonder if that's um, uh, you know runners and and you know uh, staff that has multiple duties. You know they'll be part of cleanup crew, part of the food running crew, bar backs, that kind of stuff. You know because you notice that you don't see any of that um, 
you know, you see bar staff, which would be the bartenders, but, you know, uh, you got food runners and, like I said, um, other folks will take care of that stuff. I think that's really, really what that means. Other questions on the clubhouse? Mm -hmm. None. We'll move on to the final one. And that is the one on golf operations. And Rex and Parks. Okay, anything on golf maintenance? Question. Do I have any golf maintenance not included? Golf John split that out several years ago to have a better understanding of what it was going to cost uh, to maintain the golf course versus run the golf course. In other words, maintain the facility itself. Because at some point, and this was years ago, Heck, they had Monica. I remember George. You might remember too when they. Uh, Frank, I know Frank would. Um, they had closed nine holes because the golf course was so bad. They had to redo a whole bunch of things. Uh, and so I think John at that point recommended that he track those kinds of expenses separately. You know, to, to understand and be able to, to kind of show that hey, this investment, you know, that now at this point in time has yielded these positive results. So yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm a proponent of that. You know, you didn't want to get that. to me. You don't want to get, you know, the maintenance side buried in the go in golf operations because golf operations, at least the way I look at it, is you know number of rounds, you know, number of classes that you're teaching, and so on and so forth. Versus, you know, whether or not I had enough labor to you know mow the grass, do the uh, uh, do that bidding, that yeah. the golf operation, that operation. Mm -hmm. So the nine hundred is really six hundred. Yes. All right, any other questions on that? All right, and then the last one is we're wrecking parts. Uh, the revenue was down a little bit. And although if you look, the revenue was down this month, but if you look at the revenue from year to date now and year to date last year, geez, it's up, you know, 30 grand. <laughs> okay. And if you, Look at the net operating. Um, it, <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 just the opposite. <laughs> yeah, <You know? laughs> where you're at 118 and 143, you know, negative. So you know, I don't know what's happening in in Park. And 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 in the past, uh, when I've talked to John about it, it's always been about timing. In other words, an event happens, but they don't book it to the next month, so it makes one month look kind of you know a little bit different. Uh, and the next month it's kind of, you know, makes sense. Kind of like what happened with police and fire last month where all that, uh, you know, all that revenue from the grants and everything hadn't been recorded yet, yet it shows up and now everything balances out. So I attribute it because I think it's happened before. Remember, I know it's happened before in aquatics. So, uh, but any other, any other questions on that? Uh, Camp OP, uh, down significantly for the month, mm -hmm. uh, for the year, you know, still down. I'm just wondering if we over that did so well last year on the front. We over budgeted it this year. Yeah, that that that's why it, it looks. I think negative. that's it so, did. Oh, Camp OP did very well that year without against budget. Yeah, and and I'm glad you brought that up because this it kind of leads into the next topic on the agenda. But for budget guidance, it's the kinds of things, guys, that you're going to be on the, with remaining on the committee. That we need to look at, and say, I and mean, George brings up a very good point there. It's like, okay, do we did we recalculate the budget projection based on a previous year, or did we go back like five years and say, you know, this is kind of the average number, you know, and so on and so forth. So when it comes, to, I think the budget guidance would be, you know, let's make sure we go back and get an, you know, an historical reference right. to any, you know, some of these specific items, so that we have a pretty good you know, data, uh, you know, reference to to before we make a, a prediction, because the idea would be we'll just reduce it down. Well, you know, hey, maybe we did have such a stellar year because, oh, well, one could argue it wasn't, it wasn't last year, but, you know, coming out of COVID, people went nuts. Everything went up. So participation went, like, off the charts, but then it plateaued again, you know? And so, you know, be prepared for that. Brian. Uh, just I wanted to note on Camp OP that the 
it's off 25 grand against last year. So, if it, you know, something, I don't know, if we had less kids sign up, it seems like it's a very popular thing. Do we have less instructors this time or less camp counselors? I don't know. Yeah, because last year, Camp OP were 52,000 ahead. So, you know, based on last year, did, did we over budget for, for this year? I don't I, I think it's combo. We over budgeted and we had less revenue. Yeah. Okay. I will put that in a list of questions. But, but overall, Parks and Rec did well. Yeah. <laughs> Having said all that, Parks and Rec did well. Any other questions? <laughs> okay. That's our review of the um, supplemental reports as well. All right. Next item on the agenda is uh, a review of the previous uh, budget guidance that was doing for last year's budget. I gave everybody a copy of that. I hope everybody got that copy. This is our requirement, and please use this as a reference to provide information, you know, to the uh, board of directors on the kinds of things that we've seen, uh, and after analyzing not only this year's budget, but previous budgets, uh, and looking at, uh, you know, helping get through the budget preparation process. If there are any areas of concern, but we want to make sure that either something um, wasn't addressed in last year's budget or has drastically changed between last year's budget and this year's budget, um, you know, I think we need to know. I think one of the other things that we want to focus on to make sure we fully support, and that's that irrigation system on the golf course. Uh, and so clearly we want to make sure that that gets identified and funded properly uh, within the, um, uh, you know, within the budget. Uh, so, but there are other areas and without going into too much of it, what I'm asking you guys to do would be take a, you know, if you haven't already, take a look at this and I want to come up with a draft, uh, in the next two weeks, uh, that I could send to, uh, as a draft to, the, uh, you know, to the rest of us, I'll put it all together and say, Hey guys, this is what we like. This is what we're going forward with. And then I'd like to try to make that presentation uh, to the board before our October meeting. Okay. Uh, you know, hopefully, I, I mean, that's certainly given uh, enough time, but uh, I don't want to, I don't want it to get into, because I know John and his team, knowing John, they're, they're probably already working on the budget. And as a matter of fact, I'm positive they're already working on the budget. So um, they are, uh, we just want to make sure that, uh, and this isn't a prerequisite to allowing them to work on the budget. This is just something that, you know, we do kind of as ancillary to the process where we could say, hey, by the way, look at this and look at this. And, and in some cases, you know, we may be wrong. And, and, and John and his team have already addressed it and say, yeah, by the way, we thought about that already. And we've, we've made the following, uh, you know, adjustments and so on and so forth. So there's no pride of authorship. Uh, but like I said, I really ask for your help on trying to Let's get, you know, let's take a look at this and see if we can get something together, like I said, within the next two weeks that I can, you know, finalize and uh, and send to the board. Okay. Any any questions, comments, thoughts? I'm not going to mess with dates. You'll have dates. No, I don't worry about dates. Let's worry about the concepts, you know, concepts. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda uh, is other comments. Let me say one thing. Um, you know, what I said earlier about the Madelon Company, I want to make sure that um, everybody's aware that I'm in full agreement that the RFP process needed to take place. It was, it's part of our due diligence. It's part of our bylaws. It's part of our requirements for our governing documents. Uh, and going through the process and bringing other companies in here to take a look at this food and beverage operation is absolutely required. Matter of fact, it's good business. It really is. It's important for other people to come and take a look at this. They may have other ideas. Now, now, maybe it was a little bit premature for me to say that. I do have my own preference, but that's okay. That's just me. I'm one out of the 8,400, well, actually, what is it, 8,509, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't really matter because I'm not going to referendum. The board will decide. Um, but, you know, what's well, the RFP process is absolutely required. Uh, it's it's a good thing. It's absolutely, I think, going to yield the kind of results we're hoping for. And I'm in full support of that. So I didn't want to send anybody to interpret my comments as a wrong message because it clearly is something that we needed to do. It's the right thing to do. And matter of fact, uh, uh, you know, we we support it and should continue to support it in, in the long run. So that is my comment on that. And other floors now open for more comments. George. Uh, 
Back in July, we had the uh, preview of the audit. We had some questions that we sent in. Did we ever get a response from John? I believe we. I don't know. recall seeing anything. I think so. And maybe I could have missed I will, it. I will check. Monica and I will get together and double check okay. on that. Uh, and make sure that yeah, because you had like this, we all sent questions in. And, but I don't know. Maybe I'll have it here. I don't remember getting anything back. And again, I might have missed it because I was in and out all summer traveling. So there were the wilderness. Right? Excuse me, yeah, I was in the wilderness. <laughs> we did ask him about that last month, and I think he said he acknowledged receipt of the questions and said that they would be responding. Okay, so and that's it. Thank in the Okay. Okay, I think they still owe us. Okay. You know, what's still hey, can you uh, can you mute your microphone, please? Thank you. Okay. Any other uh, any other questions, Bob? Are you working on your monthly or the annual report from the board? Hey, yes. Yes, I owe that. That is uh, end of October is when the uh, is when the report. Uh, will be due. So uh, I reserve the right to uh, query George and Brian on some of the issues. And I ask your help in reviewing the report since you guys were here for the entire time. And it would be a great source. And I really so appreciate it. Caused the problem. We ought to be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I said you contributed to the overall benefit of the community. So the, I'm sorry, the committee. <laughs> All right. Any other questions uh, during the open floor here? Seeing none, move to the last item on the agenda. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>